Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we have another day to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. So when I talk about yoga, first of all, it's a lifestyle. And part of that lifestyle is an art form, homo aestheticus. We try to beautify everything we do in our life. So it's not just a bunch of poses, number one. And one of the ways that you beautify things in your life is the quality of your speech. The rabbis say the mouth is the quill of the heart. So where are you coming from when you open your mouth and you're talking to people? Nothing is so singularly determinative of whether or not you get a portion in the world to come, according to this tradition, than the quality of your speech while you were alive. So counsel yourself wisely and share words that help to heal uh, instead of hurt people. Now, yoga is also a science, a systematized body of knowledge that's empirically developed. You don't have to believe anybody. You can find out for yourself. And, of course, there are many things that are coextensive with what we know about um, the way that nature works, scientifically speaking. And yet, of course, it's going to leave science behind at a certain point and go beyond faith into a kind of intuitive leap. Yoga is also a darshan or a window through which you see the world. It gives you a certain kind of view of things that connects you to what I always call the universal abstract indivisible spirit, invisible spirit. So what peak through does it give you? Well, it gives you a view of what I call the good, the true, and the beautiful. Oh, sounds very platonic here. The good has to do with your understanding of ethics, the yamas and the yamas, your behavior. You realize how we're all interconnected karmically speaking, and whatever you do to anybody or to the outside world, you do to yourself in a certain way. And so you want to extend compassion and kindness to whoever you can whenever you meet them. Then what's true is the science aspect of yoga. You can test these things and find out just how true it is. And that's the objective aspect of yoga, which can be measured. And you can say that's your jnana yoga, whereas your behavior is your karma yoga. So you study these things, and through your yana yoga, you realize everything is interconnected. Everything is hitched to everything else. Right? Even if you try to describe what a human being is, without oxygen, you can't describe the human being. Or if a human being is standing or walking, you can't describe the human being without talking about the ground that they're on. So we always are interconnected to everything. Organism goes with environment. And then the beautiful is the subjective understanding. And they say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. This is the bhakti yoga. This is where you fall in love with the miracle and the wonderment of everything. And you realize how everything is connected. Everything is interconnected. So yoga on all levels, which means union, to yoke things together, to see the interconnectedness, that's what gives you some, some kind of wisdom in your life. And then, of course, ultimately, it's learning how to act without attachment to the fruits you do what you do, but you do it just because it's an act of showing your competence. It's an act of showing your excellence. And that's the last part of what I want to share today, that yoga is a way, and I'm not saying it's the only way or the best way, but it's a real good way, tried and true, where you dedicate yourself to excellence, where your motivation is to live your passion, pursue your passion and live your passion. And then as a result, the quality of what you are and how you show up in the world as a human being is that you want to deliver more than your promise. The quality of that kind of service is always in demand. Opportunities will be chasing you. Life will be beckoning to you. Your drive for excellence you'll find is more powerful than wealth or status or recognition. And that compels you to develop uber competence in whatever field you choose. You're not interested in a slogan. You're not interested in a poster. You're not interested in a bonus. It's not why you do what you do. You maintain this sense of excellence because you are motivated from within. You can't explain that to people who don't get it. But if you get it, you totally understand it. So my parting shot for today, friends, is may you all do what you love. And I hope that you all love what you do. Continue that way. And... You'll be a jewel in the crown of your society, your family, your clan, your workspace, 
forever.